Good afternoon. This quote captures the work I have been doing for the last 30 years. The symbiotic junctures where machines, animals, plants, bacteria, and humans coexist is where I believe our future exists. This is two sides of one branch, an artwork that looks at the primordial wisdom of branching structures. This is a continuous branch from tree branches to hands, the things that give rise to all the technology we know. As an artist inventor, I look to natural living systems and mimesis communications to reveal the underlying co-evolved wisdom of our living world as it intertwines and co-evolves with our technological world. This is also two sides of one branch. And here you'll see as well that this is about the co-evolved wisdom between branching structures and human brains. Again, the things that give rise to all of the amazing machines which surround us. Looking at the co-evolved wisdom of branch structures, I became very interested in grapevines in particular and something called thigmotropism. This is the ability for grapevines to actually sense what's near to them and to actually understand that they could get higher to the sun by grabbing onto branches much closer to them. I took that idea and created a robotic system, a group consciousness of robots that could act as both a group and an individual at the same time. And these were robots designed to flock toward human body heat and in the process emerge into a kind of robotic organismal uh, fitness. This is what they look like functioning. Commissioned by the Piazma Museum in Helsinki, Finland. It consists of 15 musical and robotic sculptures that interact with the public and modify their behaviors based on both the presence of the participants in the exhibition and the communication between each separate sculpture. This is a new species of artificial life which is neither human nor machine, though certainly this is a species which is ascendant. We are becoming symbionic, symbiont, and my works engage interspecies communication where the biological and the technological intertwine. But this isn't the first time we've seen uh, the symbiotic relationship between humans and machines and biological things. Wolves are a very good example of the co-evolution of our species with another species, as we've now basically selectively bred wolves into domestic pet dogs. And cats are another example. As a young child, I had a beautiful cat named Kataboo that would often climb onto my shoulders and um, I would rub underneath his chin, and as I would rub under his chin, he would stick his tongue into my ear and start <laughs> licking the earwax from my ear. I thought, isn't that strange? Somehow, was this cat enjoying the taste of my earwax, or was it somehow me scratching under his chin? But it left a lifelong impression for me in thinking, <laughs> about this, this trans-species communication. This was an example for me of what we could do as a human species when we really thought about evolving, co-evolving relationships with technology. This is my pet bunny, Speedily Deet. My wife, uh, Amy Youngs, and myself have been working to breed, to co-evolve with this bunny, a micro bunny, which we could actually carry around with us in a pocket. Because I spend so much time uh, looking at flocking robots and uh, fish, one day upon entering a fish store, I saw these stunningly beautiful fish, these Siamese fighting fish. What struck me was all of these beautiful Siamese fighting fish were in a single glass of water. And I psycho-projected myself into that tank and I thought, if I was that fish, what would I want to do? Well, clearly I'd want to drive that tank around. Thus was the creation of the 
uh, augmented fish reality robot, which would give the power of robotics to fish so that they could explore beyond the limits of their tank. Part of this work was to place a peace lily within each of the tanks to absorb the waste from the fish. But this as well was really a social work. It was a work that consisted of seven robots, and these seven robots were able to roll around at will whenever the fish wanted them to, and allowed them to explore outside the limits of their tanks. I went to great lengths with this work to cushion the ride for the fish by using foam wheels. As well, I put micro video cameras in two of the robots to actually give you the perspective of the fish and to show you what the fish was seeing as it looked to the outside world. It made me tremendously happy to see that the fish would actually use the roots of the peace lilies as little mini hammocks to take little mini naps. This is actually what the fish looks like moving. This fish is actually building a bubble nest to attract the female. The biggest bubble nest often wins. This is, in fact, the maximum speed of the fish robots. They definitely do not peel out. <laughs> and here you see one of the fish moving around very slowly, very comfortably. And these fishes ex have accepted this as their home, as they compete with each other, trying to attract the female. The robots are actually able to get within one inch of each other for visual communication. You'll see here the red left one is basically uh, posing and flaring his gills, presumably to look more aggressive uh, toward the other. And here a little girl at the opening has discovered herself through the environment of the fish tank itself. One of the things I get to do as a contemporary artist is I get to travel quite a bit and show my work. And one of the really fun things for me is to hear really great talks. And at one talk, I saw a researcher named Dr. Guy Terrius said that ants were rule-driven systems. This was utterly fascinating to me because I thought, hmm, computers are rule-driven systems as well. I wonder if I could create a series of robots that would actually be able to act like ants in finding their own food source and then communicating that back to the other robots so they could also find the food source. This was the creation of the autotelematic spider bots with Matt Howard. These were robots that, in essence, were created fully within the space of the computer and, in essence, given birth to in a robotic birthing machine, a rapid prototyping machine. And this is, these are the robots at their opening. The robots would often signal to people with a kind of a neck and a tail that would move back and forth on top of them. And they also use light emitting diodes as well to show people uh, what they were feeling. This is what they look like functioning. Uh, one of them can find a food source, for example, and it can then sing its food source back to the others uh, with this Bluetooth communications and then tell them where that food source is. There's a whole evolution happening within the realm of computing and technology, which is very much about somehow giving back emotional feedback to humans because, of course, as humans, we communicate with body languages and emotional responses and so on. For example, when you approach these robots and they see you, they twitter to, to you and they give you an emotional response. And you know instantly that they see you because they look right at you with these ultrasonic um, sensors that, in fact, look like eye. So these are peaceful robots. These are pro-social robots. These are robots to make people happy that basically are co-evolving with us. And thinking about the co-evolution between humans and robots, I became very interested in something called the enteric nervous system. Many of you have heard of this uh, idea of the brain and the belly. Okay, so I thought, well, if the hand is an extension of the brain up here, then surely the tongue is, in fact, the extension of the brain and the belly, the enteric nervous system. And this was the creation of the enteric nervous system, or enteric consciousness. What's interesting about this brain in the belly is this is a brain that has co-evolved with bacterial cultures. In fact, we know now that bacteria itself is centrally tied to our health. It turns out, that human beings are actually 10 times more bacteria than human cells. 
this makes me wonder how we would even think of ourselves as individuals rather than ecosystems of all this exquisite bacteria. So what you're looking at here is the first robot, a robotic chair in the shape of a giant tongue controlled by living bacteria in an artificial stomach. If the bacteria are happy and healthy, then basically the bacteria allows the chair to recline and give the viewer a deluxe 15-minute massage. <laughs> and of course, one of the things that the enteric nervous system really wants is chocolate, cheese. So part of the installation was to have artificial tongues dipping into chocolate and cheese. As well, the, the chair itself was constructed with a red emu leather with swollen taste buds to give the impression of a hungry tongue. Uh, here, a little girl has discovered the robot, and you can see she's definitely enjoying the 15-minute massage. And part of the installation as well, as peristaltic uh, muscles move food through our own stomachs, I had peristaltic pumps that would move cooling liquid through this artificial stomach to cool the lactobacillus acidophilus bacteria that was actually controlling this artificial tongue. I also used a pH meter to measure acidity and basicity as well. And thinking about the head and the brain, I became very interested in something called the, the fusiform gyrus. This is the part of your brain that basically recognizes faces. It's, in fact, why we're always seeing faces in things like clouds or on walls and such. And I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to try to create a robot that, in fact, would be able to sense people's faces, find their faces, and could that robot then create a custom song based on the structure of their face? This was the idea for the fusiform polyphony work. And you'll see as well that given that these were robots dealing with the human head and the face, they needed to be covered with human hair. And this is at the opening in Toronto. In fact, probably my biggest opening ever. <laughs> and uh, this is actually one of the songs that was created by these robots. Oh, there it is there. Now, you'll notice that these are robots that are friendly enough to approach people. Normally, a robot would pretty much swipe your arm off, but this is, these are soft robotics. These are robots designed to be friendly, and you'll realize it was fairly challenging to allow these robots to delicately approach people's faces. But what you can see here is you can see that people are really enjoying these robots, that they're having fun. Each of the robots actually had a different name. This one, of course, was called Blondie. And um, at the time as well, we had lost the amazing musician Michael Jackson, but uh, one of them actually did have Jerry Curl, and uh, I called that one Michael, of course. And uh, you could see people are really enjoying these robots. At the tips of all of these robots were cameras, basically. And as the cameras would approach people's faces, those were brought into software, which would then allow the robots to create that custom song. And here's another song right here. Robots are really very good at making people happy. And in my opinion, that's where we need to think about technology, is how to evolve technology, how to co-evolve with technology in such a way that instead of doing violent deeds, it integrates with human beings in a way that is pro-social and friendly. Along those lines, thinking about happiness, I'm also interested in the fact that when we smile, we actually send neurotransmitters from the muscles of our face to our brain, which makes us happy. This was the idea with the paparazzi robots. These were robots designed to follow you and take your picture only if you smiled. I'd like to um, invite my wife, Amy Youngs, uh, up to the stage right now, if I may, to demonstrate the paparazzi robots. Is Amy in the house? And... Um, <clears throat> So these are the paparazzi robots, and basically they're designed to do one thing, 
which is elevate you to fame. These are the ultimate selfie robots, basically. Only if you smile will they take your picture. In essence, these are robots that are manipulating you to be happy <laughs> and also giving you the ultimate selfie. So as we are giving birth to technology, it is giving birth to us. We need to think about evolving technology that's friendly to the human species as we continue to co-evolve with them. Thank you.